Hello folks, this is Sula once again. Welcome to another video for League of Legends. And in this video, we're going to be looking at Master Yi. Yes, Master Yi recently reworked in the 3.10 patch. We're actually on the 3.10A patch now, but this is from 3.10. Yi got a rework, and so we're going to go ahead and use this custom game as an example to look at some Master Yi gameplay. We actually have two Master Yi's, both jungling in this game being played on the blue side by Spreakaway and being played on the purple side by the Gaminator. We're going to keep an eye on Spreakaway on the blue side. Also on blue side for this game is me, Sula. I'm going to be playing as Support Zyra. We also have a Setonator, I hope that's right, playing as Nasus. We have Sizzle playing as Lissandra and Terrible Bedhead playing as Twitch. Then on the other side, we have Nex11. I hope that's what that's supposed to be. Playing as Vayne, Penguin Preacher, playing as LeBlanc, Still Eternity, playing as Trundle, and Tactic Ogre supporting as Nami. So those are our two sides. Let's go ahead. We're going to look at Master Yi, as I said in this video. Yi is someone who is very strong in solo queue in particular. He is a bit of a pub stomper. The way that his kit tends to work is if he is able to snowball ahead, he's able to keep getting further and further ahead. He's one of the most snowbally champions in the game, actually, in that respect, due to the way that he gets resets on his ultimate. Has been turned down in the 3.10 patch, but is still present even afterwards. This is pre-nerf. Pre uh, pre 3.10a patch, so let's see, does the text show the, okay, the text shows the current patch, 3.10a. Uh, basically, prior to the, this most recent patch, anytime that Yi got a kill after he skills his ultimate, all of his uh, cooldowns would reset. So he could get a kill, if he got a kill on his alpha strike, he could then immediately alpha strike again, and then again and again and again with each kill. So you would often see, uh, particularly in lower elo games in solo queue, where Master Yi would just get ahead and he would just, uh, if he got ahead, he just snowballed like ridiculously hard and he would be alpha striking again and again and again in team fights. And uh, anyway, that's that. they're still present to a certain extent, but has been toned down greatly with the changes in this patch. Uh, so what are Yi's strengths and weaknesses? Well, one of his strengths is he outputs very high damage. He's some of the highest just sort of raw damage output in the game. And he is someone who can hard carry a game, actually can carry really, really hard if he gets fed. Uh, the trade-offs for having such high damage output is he doesn't bring any kind of crowd control to a team. Literally none of his skills have any crowd control, no CC whatsoever. He's also melee, so that inherently makes him vulnerable to kiting, it makes him vulnerable to ranged champions. And as a champion, Master Yi is someone who, if he falls behind, will tend to be almost completely useless. He gets, if he gets behind, he is not going to be very useful at all because when he goes in, he's going to get blown up really fast and he's going to get killed very quickly. Anyway, we're looking at jungle Yi's in this game, so note that both Yi's are going to start at buffs, starting at red and blue respectively, and uh, I'm assuming they're going to go clear their alternate buff. And we'll keep the focus on Spreakway here for the time being. So, Master Yi, let's look at some of what he does here. He has a new passive ever since the 3.10 patch. Double strike, every fourth consecutive basic attack, Yi strikes twice, and the second strike deals 50% damage. This is a rework of his old passive, which was similar, but it was something like every seventh attack he did bonus damage. So you can see the little counter here on the interface. Two, three, now it's up and right there gets the double strike. So uh, something you can keep in mind can try to stack it up. So like right now, the next auto attack should strike twice, if I am looking at this correctly. Anyway, that's pretty basic, not too much to say about that. Every four attacks you get a second double strike that deals like 50% uh, of your base damage, so it's something that adds to Yi's overall damage. His main skill, his bread and butter, is his Q, Alpha Strike. This was, of course, a skill prior to the rework that he had, but still retains it afterwards. Master Yi leaps to strike up to four enemies, deals physical damage to each, and an additional damage to minions and monsters. Alpha Strike can critically strike, which deals bonus physical damage, and basic attacks lower the cooldown of Alpha Strike by one second. So this is his main ability. When Yi pops this, he is untargetable. You cannot hit him while he's in the process of Alpha Striking. Can't be targeted by anything. So it can be quite useful for that, just to dodge incoming projectiles, dodge incoming skill shots, close the distance. It's a, it's a gap closer as well. Helps him when he's ganking as a jungler to close distance to whoever he's trying to catch up to. And this is his main source of damage as well. 
Uh, deals physical damage. This is, uh, I believe this is a change. I'm, I believe this deal, yeah, this dealt magic damage prior to the rework. This used to have an AP, AP uh, ratio. Now it purely scales off physical damage. It scales off of total attack damage and it actually scales in a one to one ratio. Note that Spreakway has 102 attack damage. What is the scaling here? Plus 102 physical damage. So keep that in mind. Uh, since the rework, there's no longer any reason to build Master Yi in terms of AP. They basically killed the ability power of Master Yi. He's all physical now, scales off of attack damage. So no, no need to build AP anymore on this guy. And the damage is quite high and it scales very well into the late game. The fact that Alpha Strike also can critically strike is is, in my opinion, a mistake. I think that it makes this skill a little bit too strong, but it can critically strike. So late game Master Yi, if he gets crits on his Alpha Strike, deals really ridiculous damage. So keep that in mind. It's his best skill. It's the skill that he uses the most, and it's the one that you'll be skilling up first alongside his E. Let's keep an eye on this top lane right now, because Freakway is setting up for a gank. Now, Freakway has walked over a, a ward in the Tri Brush, but Setonator's Nasus has gone ahead and used his Wither in top lane. Is this going to be enough to get a kill? Alpha Strike for some free damage, but no. Will not be enough. Still Eternity had some warning due to this Tribrush Ward. Very nicely placed. There we go. You can see the vision. And was able to dodge out of that. So Wither alone, not enough. Still Eternity also used a nice Trundle Pillar, and he is not going to have to use his Flash or anything else like that. The Gaminator is actually setting up for a gank in here right now with top lane Lamp Master Yi, so we'll keep an eye on that. The next skill for Master Yi that you're going to be skilling up is his E, Wuju style. This has both a passive and an active benefit. The passive is it grants bonus attack damage. Scaling, it is now a flat 10% bonus attack damage. It used to be scaling, it was like 7, 9, 11, 13, 15%. Now it's just a flat 10% at all ranks. So keep that in mind that you definitely want one point in this early. There's also an active, basic attacks deal bonus true damage for five seconds. And the passive bonus is lost while Wuju style is on cooldown. So this is a skill that it doesn't really do that much. It's pretty basic in terms of what it actually does. You get bonus damage and uh, you can pop the active to deal bonus true damage and any chance that is true damage is quite useful. Right there, Spreakaway uses his teleport to come in behind that fight, but actually is not needed because it turns out being a one-for-one -one trade between Sizzle and Penguin Preacher in mid anyway. Uh, yes, yeah, Spreakaway is jungling with teleport. Uh, very rare to do this, but he is one jungler that this actually does work pretty well on. And what is Spreakaway doing right now? Well, as, as he should be doing, he is going ahead and pushing the wave into the tower. He's going to reset this lane so that the tower will eat all these minions. And when uh, his mid laner, when Sizzle comes back to lane, it will have reset. The minions should be pretty much right back here in the middle. And basically he denied a whole bunch of minions to the enemy team by doing this. Like he denied a full wave of minions to the enemy team by doing that. So, uh, you know, uh, you will often see people saying, don't push my lane. And indeed, sometimes the jungler shouldn't push your lane. But in that situation was definitely the right call because now the lane is reset. It is perfectly back to the middle again. No advantage to either side, except that uh, purple side missed out on like a full wave of minions. Okay, uh, note that there are no points in Meditate yet. Spreakway hasn't put any points in Meditate. On the other side, the Gaminator, I believe, has put one point in Meditate. This is not a particularly crucial skill for Yi since the rework. I'll go ahead and highlight it for you. Master Yi channels, restoring X amount of health per second. You get more as you level the skill up. There is an AP ratio for this, but it's quite low. It's not a very good AP ratio on this skill. Healing is increased by percentage of Yi's missing health. While channeling, Yi reduces damage by 50%. So while you're channeling the Meditate, there is a strong damage reduction. So you can, you can do a whole bunch of sort of troll plays, baiting people by using this. While you're meditating, you take significantly less damage overall. Anyway, Spreakway is going to pop his ultimate. So we've got a duel here, Samurai Yi versus Samurai Yi. However, Spreakway is two levels higher and he is going to claim that one. Remember, uh, Gaminator was not level 6, did not have his ult. So Spreakway is now chasing after Nami, gets a double kill, now is looking to chase after Nex, and let's see, probably just needs to back out of this despite the red buff. So yes, got a double kill right there, and the biggest thing there was the difference between being 6 and poor the Gaminator only being level 5. Gaminator did not have his ultimate up, and that makes a very big difference indeed. Uh, and indeed, uh, where Spreakway got his 6 was, he was actually, when he was holding mid, that mid experience, I believe, was enough to push him over the edge. So that was another reason why that was such a key play right there. Uh, let's go ahead and highlight the, uh, the ultimate, shall we? Highlander, of course, taken from Highlander the movie, the inspiration for this. 
Passive function, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, champion kills and resists reduce the cooldown of used basic abilities by 70%. It used to be, prior to the most recent patch, uh, after the initial rework, Yi would get 18 seconds dropped off the cooldown of his non-ultimate abilities. Well, note that Alpha Strike, Alpha Strike has an 18 second cooldown, Wuju Style has an 18 second cooldown, so if he got a kill, then he would be able to Alpha Strike and Wuju Style again. Now, it's been changed so champion kills and assists reduce the remaining cooldown by 70%. So it does not allow you to alpha strike again immediately, but you will be able to alpha strike again very quickly. So you just can't do the ridiculous alpha strike, alpha strike, alpha strike in succession and get a pentakill as he was doing previously. That's just the passive function though, that just operates sort of in the background on Yi. The active function is when you pop the active, increases movement speed and attack speed, grants immunity to movement reduction effects for 10 seconds. While active champion kills and assists extend the duration of Highlander for 4 seconds. So when he pops this he gets a huge movement speed boost and attack speed boost and right there that's going to be the signal to go in because Penguin Preacher has used his own jump in. That means he is not going to be able to get out of this and so Streakway picks up the kill on LeBlanc. Yes, anytime you see LeBlanc go dashing in, as Penguin Preacher did there, Penguin jumped in with his distortion, and as soon as he had used his distortion, he did not have an escape. Only had his flash, but flash was on cooldown, so Spreakway is going to dash in and pick up that kill very, very easily. And the Master Yi snowball has, in fact, already begun, as Spreakway is off to a 3-0 start. And by the way, also has the most CS of any players in the game right now. So going to go to top lane, but not ultimately able to do anything right there. Uh, actually, well, maybe not. Actually deals quite a bit of damage even though the game laner was back under the safety of his tower. So, as I mentioned, Highlander, attack speed boost, movement speed boost, really, really good at chasing people down, and he is immune to all slows, all movement reduction effects, so you cannot slow him with it. I mean, there's a ton of different skills in this game that slow people, but Yi, when he pops his ult, cannot be slowed, so that's why he's so good at chasing people down, really good at sort of the tail end of a team fight. Anyway, here comes a tower dive right here, going in after still Eternity, Spreakway is tanking, going to use the Alpha Strike, and he's going to go ahead and pick that up, and Meditate is going to allow him to drop tower aggression right there at the end. Meditates to reduce the damage on the tower shot, and then Alpha Strike changes the aggression pattern. When you when you drop into Alpha Strike, you're no longer, uh, you, you can't dodge tower shots with it, I believe, but uh, it will reset tower aggression. Anyway though, Game Nader's gonna come in, he's gonna get the shutdown, has double buff, has roamed up here together with Penguin Preachers. Setonator's Nasus is tanking for quite some time, but he will go down and fall to that. And in the meanwhile, Sizzle's Lissandra is pushing mid as Sizzle should be doing right there. Still, a good roam by Purple Side. They're gonna pick up two kills and they get the shutdown bonus for Spreakaway's Master Yi. And Gaminator himself, 1-1-1, one, 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 certainly not doing badly, but just not scaling as well as Spreakaway's Master Yi, who is on 4,100 gold compared to Gaminator's 3,000 gold in this game right now. Okay, Spreakaway's respawn. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at his itemization right here. He has actually bought Home Guard Boots and I believe he was looking to teleport in to a fight somewhere on the map. You can see he's just kind of ready to go, decides not to do so. We believe that there was a fight in bottom lane, so let's keep an eye on this down here. Their team is setting up a gank down here in bottom lane. Uh, they have Yi coming down, and we have Lissandra roaming down as well, so it looks like there might be a fight here in a second. We'll get back to that in a moment, keep the focus up here if there's not going to be a fight. In terms of itemization, Spreakway did something a little bit unusual. He did not start with any of the Hunter's Machete items, none of the so-called jungling items. He actually started with a Doran's Blade, and Yi is one of the junglers that can get away with doing this. It actually works quite well on him just to start with the Doran's Blade instead of starting with, you know, your traditional jungler items. He has then been building straight into a Blade of the Ruined King, which is an item that scales really well with Master Yi's particular kit. Uh, gives him that extra slow effect. Remember, Yi himself does not have any crowd control on any of his abilities, so Blade of the Ruined King gives him a slow, and as mentioned before, Yi is, Yi is really good at chasing people down, at slowing them and chasing them down. So the fact that he gets that bonus slow on Blade of the Ruined King uh, just makes it that much easier to chase people down. So, a uh, good item for him. Now, will it be as good of an item after these nerfs? Not sure. Anyway, Sizzle's going to go in, uses the Lissandra ult on Penguin Preacher. That's going to pop the LeBlanc passive. The Ignite actually went onto the clone, 
by mistake. When is that Alpha Strike going to come off of cooldown? Just needs to get that Alpha Strike, but no, not going to get it. Pops in the Meditate for a second, and it's going to be a clean disengage. Yes, Penguin's clone was actually ignited there, and that allows him to survive with a very small amount of hit points. But it's still a good fight for Blue Team. Comes out ahead because Penguin will have to go back to base. Meanwhile, Sizzle is still farming, and is going to get... Well, no, actually, might not go back to base. Maybe should go back to base, but it's going to go ahead and push this tower, and uh, honestly, Penguin probably should have gone back because I don't think that he's going to be able to save this particular tower, and by being so low, it's kind of unnecessarily in danger. I guess we'll see. Okay, anyway, Spreak away, going to do another jungle clear. Did not have enough money for the uh, Blade of the Ruined King on that particular back. Note the skilling order. Again, Q maxed first. E maxed... E on Yi. Yeah. His, his third skill, maybe we should say, but the, his E, his Wuju style being skilled second. And then Meditate, one point is all you really want. Again, after the rework, uh, that Meditate is not really that useful. Anyway, Counter Jungling coming in here. Spreakaway knows that this red buff is about to come off, uh, about to respawn. So there's the dual Highlanders. Gameinator's going to flash away, and that's going to allow him to escape out of that. But his red buff is forfeit. And Spreakway doing a nice job there, continuing to just snowball ahead and going to go ahead and say, you know what, your wraiths are my race. I'm going to go ahead and pick these up and take that for myself. Thanks thanks a lot. In mid, Lissandra did manage to take that mid tower. So that has contributed to getting a fair amount of global gold for the team. And I believe that this is enough for Blade of the Ruined King on to Master Yi. There is the thousand gold and indeed there it is, Blade of the Ruined King. And with those home guard boots is ready to teleport into a fight is just looking to see where to go. Let's keep an eye on bottom lane, a likely source, or top lane. Also could be going there. Instead, doesn't see anything, and indeed decides to head back out onto the battlefield. Attack speed boots, generally pretty good on Master Yi. You would usually want something like Berserker's Greaves. Not always. Might need might need Mer uh, Merc Treads if it's against a very heavy crowd control team. Anyway, Gameinator is getting ready to gank this bottom lane, so let's keep an eye on this particular fight right here. Here comes the Nami Tidal Wave. It's, it's pretty far out, but it does get me to juke backwards. Meanwhile, here comes LeBlanc as well. And right there, I'm going to get Alpha Strike. I'm going to use Exhaust. It's a little slow. And LeBlanc is going to finish me off. Here comes the Teleport from Spreakway. The bubble will miss. I am going to get a kill with my passive right there. Alpha Strike gets one reset, another Alpha Strike, and going to continue chasing this down. And the game later, you're going to try to meditate, but that won't be enough. So let's go back and look at this very fast developing fight again, shall we? We'll just rewind and we'll take a look at this fight at half speed so we can watch what exactly Master Yi is doing here. We'll keep the camera on Spreakway. So anyway, here comes the fight in again. There is the jump in from the Gameinator. And here comes the teleport. And let's go ahead and slow this down right here. The bubble will miss. Watch the Zyra passive come out. And yes, I'm going to steal that kill. But one Alpha Strike comes through. Tactical Ogre is going to die. That gets a reset. Another Alpha Strike comes out. Another kill onto the Vayne player. Next 11. That allows for a third Alpha Strike to come out with the resets functioning as they did in this patch version. And now Game Nader gonna meditate under the tower, but not enough, so there is a triple kill for Spreakway. And this is why Yi is so terrifying in solo queue, because he can turn these fights around so quickly. And if he gets to this point, note that Spreakway is seven and one on the game right now, if he hits this point, you are in for a world of trouble because of just how much damage he does, and it is extremely tough to stop him in a solo queue environment. Uh, remember, while he's alpha striking, he is uh, he is untargetable. This is not like a Katarina ultimate, where when Katarina tries to use her Death Lotus, you can hit her with all sorts of crowd control and stop her. That's sort of the one counterplay you have available against someone like Katarina. But Yi, when he's in alpha strike, you can't target him in any way. So alpha strike gets a kill, then uh, alpha strike again, and you know you can't interrupt that while it's taking place. So Yi has been toned down in this most recent patch, but he's still quite strong, particularly in solo queue. And uh, he's actually not allowed right now in the professional games. He is actually banned from the uh, summer LCS playoffs that are going on right now if you're watching this video right when it gets posted and so he is actually disabled for all those games which is why we're not seeing any of the pro teams use him but anyway that was a lot of gold for Spreakway uh, he got almost 2,000 gold off that sequence so has turned that into a BF sword and uh, Yi once he starts getting going his attack damage starts to get pretty crazy so see 218 attack damage and of course this scales really well with his Wuju style as well 10% bonus attack damage that's 25 
right now. Uh, the numbers, again, might be off a bit because this was played under a previous patch version where Wuju Style granted 15% bonus attack damage as opposed to the 10% it does right now. Uh, if we want to highlight the uh, damage on that Alpha Strike while we've got a minute here, see how much damage it deals, 165 base and then plus 218 because of the scaling. Right there, Penguin's going to get a kill onto Sizzle, but Spreakway will be there on the cleanup and turns it into a one for one. And he is actually quite a bit in front of the Game Nader. Game Nader's going to meditate, but yeah, that's not probably not going to work right here. Oh, it is going to work. Going to be able to get out. I thought that, did not think he was going to be able to escape that, but in fact was able to jump on out of that meditate, providing just enough damage reduction along with the tower to disencouraging, to disencourage that. No, and he's actually not maxing that. Game Nader only had one point in the skill, but was enough to uh, tank through that particular damage right there. Percent, yes, percent health increase at low health, well said, was indeed very much the case right there. Elsewhere in the game, it's still, it was a close game right up until that teleport triple kill. That along with, uh, that play got the, perp the blue team the bottom tower, also got blue team the first dragon. And so that whole sequence has given blue team about a 5,000 gold lead in the game right now. Uh, up until that point, it had been very, very close overall in the game. Most of the difference is on the two junglers, our two competing Yi's that we've seen dueling in this game. That is where the biggest gold difference happens to be. 7,800 gold against 4,500. That's what, 3,000 gold and the lead's 5,000. So that plus global gold is pretty much the difference in this one. Right now, Spreakway appears to be building towards Infinity Edge. That or the, the last uh, pickaxe could also be for Last Whisper, but I'm guessing it's for Infinity Edge. It's quite good on Master Yi, remember, because his... Alpha Strike does have the chance to critically strike. How much crit chance? Well, 0% right now, but if you get to Infinity Edge, you'll have some crit chance due to the uh, agility cloak that you pick up with that. Elsewhere, as I said, the game's pretty even. I mean, in top lane, it's pretty much just been a farm fest between Still Eternity and Setonator. What is that? Setonator? I hope that's right. Really have just been farming back and forth. Not much difference between the two of them. Mid lane, there's been quite a few... Da well, there's been a lot of kills from Penguin Preacher's LeBlanc. Not so many from Sizzle. Right now, I'm going to look to go in. Again, look how much damage that LeBlanc damage is dealing in. Spreakway is going to pick that up. Well baited between the two of them. It looks like Sizzle used the self-cast Lissandra ult right there. Uh, getting some help from the jungler and definitely needed here in this matchup. So, gonna look to put pressure on that tower again. Now, look, looking to turn on the Game Nader, and right there, Game Nader's gonna use Alpha Strike, but then uh, Spreakway will Alpha Strike as well. He's gonna be able to pick up that kill. Sizzle is gonna go in. Remember, he doesn't have his ult right now, though. Uh, I'm gonna toss down the uh, gonna toss down the Zyra ult for try and get us out of there, but it's not enough, and we are going to lose Sizzle in that fight uh, with his ult on cooldown. Probably should not have gone back in there. But anyway, did still get some damage on that mid tower in that whole sequence. Overall, though, not a huge difference. And that did buy time for terrible bed hits. Twitch to get in some damage in bottom lane because uh, Vayne and Nami had to roam mid to help out in that particular sequence right there. So got about half of that bottom tower and extend the lead a little bit in that situation. Uh, one thing spreakway has been doing really well in this game is he's been farming. He farms the jungle very quickly because he deals so much damage. Note just that how his minion kill number, 150, has been keeping pace, honestly, with the solo lanes. And yes, he has taken some solo lane farm, but a lot of that really is just from clearing the jungle, farming it, and in fact has stolen quite a bit from the jungle uh, from the other side. And look, right here, gonna teleport onto a ward against the Gaming Nair. Has home guard boots, so that is coming into this as well. Is it going to be enough to get a kill on the Game Nader? Well, Spreakway is going in. He just wants this kill underneath the tower. There is du dueling Alpha Strikes once again. And yes, it is, in fact, enough to get that kill. So, Teleport Master Yi teleporting onto a ward to counter jungle at the enemy team's red. And uh, he just goes for it. Uh, note that why Spreakway is able to do that is because he's finished his Infinity Edge. And that is a huge spike in his damage once he gets that. So, uh, teleport in with the Home Guard. You're not really going to be able to get away from that and goes in and just chases it down. Now back to farming in the jungle once again. Meanwhile, the Sandra ult used on Vayne. Is this gonna be enough? Yes, does get the kill, but then gets traded back one for one as Penguin Preacher is able to pick up that kill with LeBlanc. His ninth kill on the game, by the way, is nine of the team's 11 kills, is doing his best to hard carry this game. Let's just put it that way. Right here, a Terrible Bedhead's gonna pick that off on the other side of the little trade right there. And I believe that Dragon is getting ready to respawn soon. Hold on, what is it? No, nope, actually still, uh, no, yes, yes it is. It's about to respawn. That's why the team is congregating around Dragon. It was 2215 or something. 
or 22, 20 something. But anyway, it's about to respawn. And so that's why everybody is set up right here to go ahead and take this. Uh, there's not a whole lot that Purple Side can do because they lost that last exchange. And so they're not here in order to do the dragon. But good jungling means trying to be on top of the timers. And that was a good example of being on top of that jungle timer. So overall in the game right now, it's a quite substantial lead for blue team. They have a lead of, uh, what is it, about 8,000 gold roughly, something somewhere around there, roughly 8,000 gold. And that lead has been increasing. Uh, the one really scary person on the other side for the purple team is Penguin Preacher's LeBlanc. Uh, with that Deathfire Grasp, he can pretty much one-shot just about anyone on the team if he uses all of his skills in succession. Very, very scary. But of course, can only really do that to one person. That's LeBlanc's role. She uh, basically takes out one person. Spreakaway coming in for another gank here in top lane. You saw pink, and there, note that there is no tower back here. There is the Highlander pop for the movement speed bonus. Going in, there is Blade of the Ruin King used, and just auto-attacking, opera striking, and yes, you saw just how fast poor Still Eternity melted in that top lane. Now, granted, that's because he has not built any defensive items as Trundle. If you look at his Trundle build, he built Blade of the Ruin King, which is a good item for laning, gives good sustain, but there's no no defensive items right there. So he, you know, he melts like an ice cube in the hot sun when Yi gets in there and starts auto-attacking. Spreakway's gone back to buy again and has picked up a Hex Drinker, a, a, a smart item choice given how strong LeBlanc is in this game. But the, the attack damage is starting to get ridiculous. 296 attack damage. The Wuju style granting, what, 39 bonus attack damage. And the Alpha Strike dealing 165 plus 296. I mean, what is that, Four about 450 damage, roughly? And it can critically strike, which would deal an additional 284 physical damage. So starting to hit the point where one Alpha Strike can deal, I don't know, 800 damage before damage mitigation. And that's a 25% chance of getting a crit. So, so pretty ridiculous right there. If you get an Alpha Strike on like the full enemy team, their health bars are going to take a pounding. And then if you get to kill or an assist, he'll get a reset and then you can Alpha Strike again. And you, you, know, you can start to see how silly it gets. Uh, granted, yes. Now... To be fair, Yi is 11 and 1. Spreakway is 11 and 1 on this game. So this is not what's going to happen in every game. Obviously, I'm showing an example of a game where Yi is doing very well, but it's still very, very strong, and that's sort of the problem. Uh, right here was trying to wait for. I was trying to wait for LeBlanc to come over to her blue. I was hoping uh, my intention was to catch her when she went over to her blue. But I'm standing on a ward. I had no idea I was standing on a ward. Right there, Penguin's going to jump in, full combo, and I die because I'm a support, and that's what happens when a LeBlanc who has 10 kills, does that. Now, uh, the good news is Spreakway is able to jump in. That gets one kill. He's going to be able to get the reset. He needs to kill Tactics Ogre to get a reset. There it is. Now he's going to get Alpha Strike to reset. He's going to be able to escape. Hux Drinker is going to pop, but no. Gets taken down by the tower. Vayne is very low. We'll fall to the Twitch Expunge. The Game Leader now, can he get the resets on the other side? No. Chooses not to go in on sort of the, the tail end of that fight and Terrible Bedhead will get the tower. So the overall play works out for Blue Team, works out for my side. We end up going three for two and getting the tower, but that was largely due to the fact that Master Yi is just rampaging through this game. That Spreakway's Yi is, is getting pretty ridiculous at that point. Otherwise, that could have been a very bad fight for us, but it worked out okay. And one thing that that fight hopefully, hopefully shows is just how dependent Master Yi is on getting some kind of a kill or an assist. He really needs that in order to get a reset on his abilities. He needs to be able to Alpha Strike again so that he can reset Tower Aggression, so that he can reposition himself in a team fight, so that he can pop his Wuju style again and get that bonus true damage for the next five seconds. Um, so remember, I mean, you do want to build armor against you. Up, here comes a Teleport, teleporting in against the Game Nader. Is this going to work out? Well, it's actually a 1v2, and no, actually, sees LeBlanc there. Penguin Preacher's like, nope, you, you're not going to do that to my, my buddy Yi here. Uh, no no Yi on Yi action where LeBlanc is concerned. So uh, thinks better of it, backs off, was probably the right decision right there, because, well, that LeBlanc does have 10 kills. Very typical LeBlanc game, by the way. Uh, when you play as LeBlanc, you tend to have a ton of kills, but LeBlanc also tends to die a lot, because oftentimes after she uses her full combo she just gets killed pretty much instantly. That and the fact that LeBlanc has to build full damage or else she's not doing her job. So that's not all that surprising in LeBlanc games that you, you do tend to see stuff like that. Right now, our team is looking to try to push into the enemy team's base. We have not, we've been having trouble sort of getting deeper into their base because they actually have some pretty good, uh, pretty good anti-dive potential, mostly in the form of Nami. It, it, it's a bit difficult to dive against Nami and Trundle can 
toss down that pillar makes it a little bit awkward as well. So about this point in time, our suggestion was, look, why don't we just set up for Baron because their team is playing really defensively. Like their team is just holding their, their towers, which is not a bad play either, by the way. Their team's quite a bit behind. They're 10k gold behind. So playing defensively is what they should be doing. But uh, our thought was, you know what? Well, if they're going to sit back and just play defensively, then uh, let's make a play on Baron. You know, I've gone ahead and grabbed the Oracle as support support Zyra here. It's like, let's, you know, let's go ahead and we'll, we'll clear out their vision. And if they're not there, we'll just do Baron because Master Yi with 370 attack damage can clear this out super duper fast. So keep an eye on the Baron's health bar. Watch it. will drop very, very quickly. So we, we toss down. Oh, we've got, and we've got Nasus too. Nasus burns down Baron very fast as well. So this is going to go down in a real hurry. And their team, but before they can do anything about it, the, the Baron just goes down. So if, if you see a team turtling really hard, sometimes taking a Baron can be a really good way to, to break the stalemate. And oh my goodness, see how much damage that Alpha Strike did? Penguin Preacher did not die, but he lost about 80% of his health in like one second. And gonna distortion right over the wall again. Nice escape by Penguin. And uh, what he, well, what their team wants us to do is keep chasing LeBlanc. We're, we're gonna back off that and just look to push lane. So this is a nice escape, but uh, we're wasting time right now if we back off and try to do that. So we're gonna look to push instead. And we probably should all be in the same lane. So anyway, here we are. We're coming up towards the top lane. Terrible bed head. It's going to sneak in there doing the Twitch submarine, as I've seen people call it. And going to look to force this fight. Trundle is kind of out there by himself, but he's starting to get tanky. He's now built a Randuin Zome and a good, item, a good itemization choice against against the Master Yi. So he is going to be able to get out of there. First tower, inner tower goes down. And uh, now looking to push the next tower, but this is quite dangerous. Setonators, Nasus went in too far, and that was a mistake. Gets rooted, gets caught by a very nice pillar from Still Eternity, gets caught by a uh, LeBlanc chain, and that just means that the team needs to disengage and back out, because we do not want to try to dive their base in a 4v5 situation. And at this point, disengaging really is the better, best call in this situation. Better to wait for Nasus to come back, come back, and... Uh, you know, look to push into the base once he's back on the field. There are other targets to get. Dragon is back up. There is a big minion wave to clear and bottom. Twitch maybe should have rotated down there a little faster and grabbed that minion wave for himself. But in any case, we'll go ahead and we'll look to grab this dragon. And we do still need to get into their base. Until we actually get into their base and take down an inhib, the game is not over. I mean, yes, huge gold lead and all, but you, you haven't really put a game to bed until you've gotten at least one inhib. Uh, preferably when you get two inhibs. Once two inhibs go down, the game is usually pretty much over. Not always, but usually. Until that happens, their team still has a shot to stall this out and capitalize on bad mistakes and go from there. By the way, check out with Baron Buff. Uh, with Baron Buff and his E on, his uh, Wuju style popped, Master Yi, uh, Spreakaway's Master Yi goes up to like 400... 400 something, yeah, there it is, 419 attack damage, something totally ridiculous. Yes, he's got a Baron Buff, yes, he's got a Red Pot, but that's still pretty insane. And he's sitting on even more gold, you know, 1,400 gold to spend uh, when he goes back to base. So we'll see what that gets turned into. Probably, probably a bloodthirster is my guess, based on that BF sword that's sitting there. Anyway, our team still needs to, as I said, finish up this game in a very dominant position, but haven't actually ended the game yet. So we need to look to do that, and would be preferably while we still have Baron on everyone other than Nasus. So we'll would be good to group up and shove a lane. Bot is the best lane to shove because while Baron is you know, not up while Baron's been taken by one team. Bottom lane is a good lane to go after because there's no threat of losing Baron. Anyway, right there, Penguin's gonna get off a full combo on the Spreakaway, and you're gonna see the Blade of the Ruin King pop. Alpha Strike goes in, deals tremendous damage, but Spreakaway will fall. Yi and uh, getting killed by the Gaminator, and then I'm gonna be the target. I'm gonna get popped as well. And Terrible Bedhead now has no front line to protect him, so he is in trouble. In comes a teleport from Nasus, but it is a very late teleport. Needed him about three or four seconds sooner right there. And uh, this fight's going to continue. Still Eternity is tanking pretty hard. Penguin is still alive. Yes, in all that hubbub, LeBlanc was able to slip out of there. So right now, it is actually a three for one in their team's favor. And what you saw in that fight is just how heavily my team, the blue team, is relying on Spreak Away to, you know, be a monster in these team fights. There is the Nasus Wither. Is this going to turn into a kill? No. LeBlanc is going to be enough to chase that off. But yeah, when Master Yi goes down first, my team does not fight very well because we, well, 14 of our kills are on Master Yi, and uh, he's leading the team in global gold by a wide margin, 14k, and no one else is over 11k. 
So when, when Master Yi goes down first, it's it's not good for the team. And you saw how their team, even though they were way behind in Global Gold, were still able to get a good team fight out of that, largely because of, uh, well, catching and bursting down Master Yi first. So uh, Spreakway did finish a Bloodthirster. That takes him to an even more ridiculous gold total of AD total, and it's still going up because he's actually got to stack that Bloodthirster now. He can still get 27 more AD on that. So uh, with his Wuju style popped, he's going to be up close to four, he's going to be well over 400 attack damage. And again, that all scales on, um, remember his Alpha Strike, his Q scales off of total attack damage, not bonus attack damage. So every, every point of AD adds on to the damage that that skill's doing. And if we get another fight where Yi is able to get resets off, then it's going to be pretty ridiculous as far as how this is concerned. Uh, right there, badge of shame for a support player. Accidentally hit R instead of E. Ult nothing in middle lane. So uh, number number one was that best Syrah and A right there. You see that being used in that particular situation. Uh, not not one of the not one of the shining moments of my support career. Let's just put it that way. Anyway, team is looking to get grouped up. Really, the, the, this game is going on longer than it should because uh, team is not grouping very well. Our, our team is significantly stronger than their team, and we really should, well, just look to group and push something because we're 12k gold ahead, and uh, the, the only way we're going to lose this game is if we get picked off like we did in that last fight, and how do you avoid getting picked off? Well, usually the best way to do that is to group up, so there's no real reason not to just group up and uh, shove a lane, whether it's top or bottom or mid or whatever, but just to group and shove something. Their team set up in this bush. We know that they're in this bush. We actually saw that they were heading in there. Going to go ahead and ward that. And uh, are we going to be able to catch someone out? There goes Sizzle. Going to use the Lissandra ult onto the Gaminator, and he will get popped. Now Spreakway is chasing after Tactic Sogar, and oh, this is when it sucks to be a support. Because you are under-leveled and under-farmed, and you are in a lot of trouble. So that is a quick 2 for 0, and the ouch is very appropriate. When, when Yi is on your tail like that, and you're a support, you're in a lot of trouble. Uh, we did know that LeBlanc was back here. We actually had seen that LeBlanc was back behind us. We were trying to be a little bit careful, but we did want to try to get this tower. At this point, our team was... Uh, I don't think our team was fully in, uh, fully on board. Maybe we were. Uh, oh, right here, we were trying... I don't know if we were fully... Uh, wow, I tongue-tied here. Fully on board with what we were supposed to do. Uh, as it was, got the tower, got the inhib, and managed to get out. And you see the ping over there at Baron because uh, Baron's about to respawn, and we want to be over there to try to deal with that. Uh, Penguin Preacher is in an exposed position, but Distortion will get him out of that. And it looks like we were able to get what we wanted, the bottom tower and the bottom inhib, and get out of there without any real trouble. I went ahead and bought uh, an Oracle to run back towards the run back towards the Baron. Uh, as it turns out, though, Baron's already spawned, and that Oracle was probably a little too late. It, it likely would have been better just to stay with the team rather than to go back to base. Uh, in any case, though, their team is going to run over here, and we're going to look to burst this down really quickly. They are going to word it so they know that this is going on, but that Baron is dying incredibly quickly. Down it goes, and we do manage to take the Baron, so the Oracle did not really do much of anything. And are we going to be able to chase down Penguin? Is he going to be able to jump out of there? He is going to jump in. Look at the damage to Terrible Bedhead, but he will survive that particular fight. Uh, the Lissandra ult is self-used. That was probably a bit of a mistake. Probably meant to click it on the Gaminator, and misclicked right there. Uh, would have been better certainly to use it to tie up uh, Master Yi rather than self-ulting when on 100% health. Anyway, it looks like Nami was DC'd for a second but is back now. And with this Baron, what the team wants to do is push in and, uh, well, try to get this middle tower, middle inhib, and try to put this game to bed because it's just about over at this point. Right there, Alpha Strikes coming out. The dueling Alpha Strikes once again. Spreakway gets exhausted. That's a good use of exhaust by their team. And their team actually manages a pretty solid disengage here. They're managing to get out of this. Still Eternity tanking in the front line as Trundle. We want to get this in him and then look to get out from there. Ooh, that, that claw from Lissandra did a lot of damage. But uh, able to get the mid tower, decided to back off, did not get the middle in him. Going to look to back off, take Dragon, and then look to push. So I'll go ahead and put this at double speed here, since it's just going to be a matter of the team going to take Dragon, going back to buy, and then looking to push after that. So we don't need to waste any more time on this game. At this point, we'll go ahead and take a look at Spreak Away again. Go ahead and lock the camera on him for right now. Yes, that is 534 attack damage. Yes, he has Baron. Does he have a red pot? No, does not have a red pot, but... Uh, yeah, that's that's a lot of AD right now. He actually has not even popped the Wuju style, his E right now. So when he pops that, it should go 
close to, should be at about 600 when he pops that. So anyway, we'll slow it back down to real time, but that is an insane amount of damage. Look at that, plus 500, 537, and if he crits, he deals an additional 500 damage. That crit chance, still sitting at 25%, but if he crits, the health bar is just going to go down to nothing in a second. All right, so down goes the second in him. At this point, it's an easy rotation to top lane. Yes, could try to push in here, but you never really want to fight at the double nexus towers if you can avoid it. Much safer just to go as a group to top lane, look to grab the minions, shove this tower, and then look to finish the game from there. No reason to do anything unnecessary in terms of how this game's set up. Keep an eye on Yi again, still sitting there with that totally insane 500 something whatever attack damage right there. Uh, is probably building yet another Bloodthirster right there. Has the Maw of Malmordius, so will deal even more damage if his health gets low. And let's see, is the tower gonna go down? Yes it is, Nasus is getting low though right now. Out comes the Nami ult, out comes the Zyra ult right there. Trying to keep an eye on Yi, he actually did get a bit low sort of lurking around in the back right there, waiting for Alpha Strike. There is a kill, so that's going to allow another Alpha Strike to come off cooldown, and that's going to be one kill. Down goes another kill. It's actually Twitch getting most of the kills in this fight. Twitch, of course, another monster late game carry. Spreak away will die, but everyone else will survive. Vayne cannot stop this push, and that is going to be it for this particular game. Yeah, Nex, is do Nex 11 is doing his best to stay alive right here, but uh, it's not gonna be enough. Goes down to Twitch, Twitch will pick that up, and that will be the end of the game right there. So a very, very hard carry from Spreakaway's Master Yi. Uh, ends up 17-4-4 overall on the game, and really took control of this one, and snowballed the team to a win. Uh, yeah, on the global gold, just shy of 18K. So it was about 7,000 gold above the other Jungar. Uh, I didn't think that, and I, it's not that I thought Gaminator was that bad in this game, but uh, Spreakaway just super hard carried this one and really took control of this match. Anyway, hopefully that was a chance to see some Master Yi gameplay. Hope people enjoyed it who haven't, haven't had a chance to see him since the rework. Although if you've been playing solo queue, you've probably seen him a lot since the rework because he's been quite popular. Until next time, once again, have a great week. See you guys later. Until then, take care.